Welcome back to Market on Close. We've got a little bit of volatility in stocks today. A tiny bit of swings in the bond market, and within that, the U.S. dollar has maintained its strength. I want to welcome in Bob Aicino, the founder and chief strategist at Path Trading Partners, for joining us. Uh, Bob, great to see you. Let's talk USD before we get into oil, since I know once we go there, that's where we get stuck, Bob, because I love talking to you about it. So, uh, <laughs> dollar continuing to push higher. Uh, what's next for here? What, what are you looking at in terms of uh, catalysts, uh, reasons for the strength, et cetera? You see the irony of getting stuck in oil? Ah, I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, the dollar itself, we talked about this quite a bit, and I don't think the dynamic has really changed. The dollar led yields. Just from a timing perspective, the dollar started to rally a little bit before we started to get spooked by this 3%. And by we, I mean everybody but us, meaning you and me. But the 3% yield threshold has been, you know, basically breached. We've based yep. above it. We've confirmed that this is a breakout triple top. Uh, I talked to you guys in studio a couple of weeks ago or last week that I think 325 is, is a done deal by 2018. So I think the dollar really solidifies. And if we get a dip, it's probably going to be bought. You look at, I mentioned this this morning uh, with Ben and Steph and then Kevin, that the Fed watch tool here at the CME group had 100% probability of a June rate hike, uh, 25 basis point. June rate hike. As of this morning, it had a 95% probability of a 25%, 25 basis point June rate hike, and a 5% probability of a 50 basis point rate hike. Mm. So we're actually going uh, to stronger rate hikes in the short end, which is going to push the long end more given the recent surge we've seen. It's just going to accelerate that. Three month bills above the S&P yield. All of that is, to, is talking about a higher dollar, and there's not much pointing to a weaker dollar at this point. Bob, is this why it's been one of the explanations for why I can see this strength in the small cap market right now? Uh, we were talking about this as a uh, sort of a hedge to the tariff volatility, and this was something we hit in March, April, because you saw days in which there were concerns about trade. The Russell didn't drop as much as its peers. So you have that domestic sort of hedge. Then you throw a strong dollar on top of it now since mid, what, April? Suddenly, small caps, not yep. only do they drop as much, they're up uh, five tenths of a percent. Is this what's happening, Bob? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, Oliver. That's exactly right. It's a great narrative. There are so many moving parts for multinationals now that you almost have to do your analysis of those second, given the climate. When you've got the stronger dollar, you've got the yields creeping up. We're not at a, a rate yet where corporations are going to have to factor in higher higher borrowing costs, which would affect some of the Russell more so than some of the Dow specifically, where it's not going to move the needle on some of the larger Dow companies that might in the Russell, but we're not at that point yet. So the Russell is a great place to be when you look at it and with all the moving parts of the trade war with NAFTA getting worse, China getting better, North Korea kind of bobbing back and forth from the mm -hmm. geopolitical side of things, uh, Japan potentially slapping tariffs on the U.S. or at least threatening. So although it's only 409 million, that's nothing. Having said all that, there's so many moving parts for multinationals that the Russell has to look attractive. Yeah, uh, Bob, what I'm curious about- In from the, the scope of stocks being attractive. Sure, and that's a good point because my next question, real quick before I wanna get your take on today's oil action, is how, can, how extended can that get, Bob? You know, when we thought about dispersion cropping up in markets with higher rates, that has been the case, but I gotta admit, I never really thought you'd see the, quite the level of cross benchmark dispersion within the stock market itself. Can the Russell keep moving higher or is there gonna be a overall sentiment if it's negative S&P, if it's negative Dow, how long can those small caps displace themselves from whatever's keeping the others down? Yeah, I think there's going to be a reckoning on that. I just don't see it in the large caps yet. We don't see that pressure. Again, there's going to be a point in time, as you mentioned, where the yields are high enough where you're not hurt to be in cash. Right, especially if the S and P and the Dow are leaking like they did today. You know, we certainly wouldn't call today a high volume sell off panic by any means. Sure, but it's leaking, right? And and the more those yields put pressure on the large caps, the Russell will have to follow. But it's still the safer place to be, given the trade dispute, given the stronger dollar. So yeah. you want to lead with the Russell in this particular climate. Good analysis, Bob. Hey, oil, uh, what's going on here? Because uh, today it looked like maybe it was going to be softer. And then guess what? We're back up again. <laughs> this thing is just not stopping. <laughs>
you know, the narrative is still bullish. Uh, it's starting to weigh on me a little bit. We got that $80 in Brent. OPEC is non-committal about whether they're going to replace Iranian production or not. Some European companies are already pulling out of deals, planned CapEx that they intended to do within the Iranian border and within the Iranian oil patch. They're already backing out of there. Venezuela continues. The narrative is still bullish. Having said that, now we're going to see that proverbial spigot get turned on. People mm -hmm. talk about the spigots. You and I have talked about this before. It's not that simple. Shale has been not as profitable as they should be, but yet much more careful, I believe because of sort of shadow CapEx. And I think we're finally gonna see, you already saw the boost in production, 144,000 barrel a day increase. Uh, that's huge. The uh, US exports going out rather, getting bigger and bigger. I think now we're going to see shale all of a sudden creep up at a rate that is gonna surprise people. That I think is the breaking point. Look for that probably around the second week of June, I think. All right, Bob Aichino, you know, we gotta leave it there. Uh, pleasure chatting with you as always. And as we speak, uh, the dollar and uh, bonds continue to move in the direction higher. We gotta leave it there in terms of yield. Bob Aichino, founder and chief strategist at Path Trading Partners.